What's up guys, Sean the Bro here. In today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we're going to be going over using the values from the music volume and sound effect volume sliders in our actual sound effects. So we did this for the music volume, where the actual value of the music volume was being used to determine how loud the music was in the game. But we had never done it for sound effects. And additionally, when we were controlling these sliders through the keyboard or the controller or the mouse in the menu, it wasn't actually saving this data out. We were saving the data out to a file, but the settings menu itself wasn't actually changing the value of the music volume or sound effect volume based on these slider values. So we're gonna fix that up, make sure that this data is saved out, then we're gonna use it to actually play sound effects and music at the correct volume. This is episode 205 of the Fighting Game Tutorial series, and if you wanna get caught up before we get into this episode, I recommend clicking this playlist right here in the top right corner. You can check out everything we've done to date, from hitboxes to entrances to game flow. We have covered so many things in this series, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. Now, alternatively, if you don't care about that and you just care about the settings and making the sound effects play at the given volume, then I'll go ahead and link you to this episode right here, which is where we set up controlling these sliders with our keyboard or other input device such as controller. That out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to be doing pretty much everything in the blueprints today because it's going to be related to the settings screen, but we will touch the code a little bit. Let's go into the settings screen before anything else. So this is my settings screen widget. And in here I have my music volume and sound effect volume sliders. If I go into the graph, you'll see that I did have the ability to move the sliders around by this function that we created called move slider. We could actually change the values of the sliders. However, the sliders themselves are not bound to any specific value. Even if I go to the value here, they're just set to 0.5 by default. Now, optimally, what we'd want is when we load into the game, it has our saved values. So for example, when I come into settings, you'll see my values aren't quite all the way at the end, but they're also not in the middle. They are at my saved and stored values. So the first thing we wanna do in the settings screen menu is go to our event construct, where we were setting up all of the bindings for our inputs. So moving up, down, left, right, confirm, and back. And after that, we were going through the selections of each row, determining the chosen option by the player, and then displaying that chosen option to the player. Once this loop completes, I wanna add a new node now, and I'm gonna call a new function that we add today. Let's go ahead and add a new function to this widget, plus function. I called this one display chosen slider values. Let's go into this function. So in here, what we're doing is grabbing the music volume and the sound effect volume from the game instance, and then we're going to use those values to call set value on each slider. You'll notice that if we go back to these sliders, the value of 0.5 is halfway through this slider. So it's a ratio of 0 to 1. 0 would be all the way to the left, 1.0 would be all the way to the right, 0.5 is in the middle. So this is like having the volume at 50%. Luckily, we set our game instance variables up the same way. So we have floats for our music volume and sound effect volume. And if we go to the constructor, you'll see that they default to 1.0. That is 100% of the volume. So we can simply use the values that we have for these two variables and call set value on the slider, and it will be completely correct. It will be the exact value that we expect. No conversion is needed or anything. We can just grab our game instance reference, which we have a variable of from earlier in the series. Get game instance reference. And I can get my music volume and get my sound effect volume. Now, I can drag off each of my sliders. So if I get my music volume slider, just to show you, music volume slider, MV slider is this. And this is sound effect volume slider, or SEV slider. So music volume slider, set value, and we just pass in the music volume. And then sound effect volume slider, set value, 
and pass in the sound effect volume. And you'll see that's what I have here. So as soon as we come into this widget, as soon as it's constructed, we're going to grab the values from the game instance reference, which is set at the start of event construct right here. And we're going to grab the music and sound effect volumes off of that and set the sliders to where they should be. So when we come into the screen for the first time, it's not always going to have the same default value. It's actually going to read the values in and move the bars accordingly. Great. Let's make sure we call this function in the event graph. So again, going back to where I started with all this, this for loop completed, I want to call it display chosen slider values. Now at this point, all of our logic, all of our choices on the settings menu are going to be pre-filled on the menu so that when the user comes into them, they're all the actual values. And that is great. But there's another thing we need to do. We actually do have to set the music volume and sound effect volume values in the game instance equal to the values from the slider bars so that when the player moves them, these values actually change. We were saving out the volume variables to a file and loading them back in, but we were never actually changing their values on the settings menu, so it didn't really matter. Let's go back into the graph and let's go to the P1 back or on press back button events. So the P1 back is if I press the back button on my keyboard or controller. This could be the B button on an Xbox controller, my backspace or escape button on my keyboard, whatever it may be. In my case, I have bound this to the backspace button. But additionally, we can press the back button, which is this actual button here in the bottom left corner and exit out of this menu. So when we're exiting out of the menu, I want to update the music and sound effect volume with the values from the sliders. So if we change them, they will change in the game instance as well. So everything that was in this, these two events has just been moved over. This is all the same behavior. I'm just adding these nodes right here. So I grab my music volume slider and my sound effect volume slider and get them both. We're going to get the value of each of these. Then we're going to get our game instance reference and we're going to do the opposite. So this time we're going to call set music volume and set sound effect volume. And then we're going to pass in the value of the music volume slider into set music volume and the value of the sound effect volume slider into sound effect volume. And that's what we have here. So now our settings menu is fully functional with the music and sound effect volumes when the user is changing those sliders. The other part of today's episode is making it so the music and the sound effects actually play at the corresponding volume. And there's actually a really easy way to do this. So first things first, let's go into our base function library. This is just a blueprint function library that we set up in the series, and we have a lot of different functions in here that we can call from anywhere and do specific behavior with. In here, we had play music and stop music. If we go to play music, you can see that we are already passing along the music volume from the game instance to determine how loud the music is when going to the stages. So the music does not have this issue, but all of our sound effects are in different widgets or some are in code, some are in blueprint, and we want them all to follow the same standard of using the sound effect volume to determine what volume the sound effect should play at. So what I've done is I've made a new function in my base function library. I'm going to hit plus function and I'm going to call it custom play sound 2D because we're going to basically just call play sound 2d but pass along the sound effect volume into it every time so we'll take the sound that's passed in we'll use our own sound effect volume and play it like that that way we don't have to get the game instance every single time we want to play a sound effect this base function library will get the game instance in here so inside this function the first thing i did was add an input parameter so plus new parameter and i called it sound to play this is because we need to have the actual sound effect that we're passing into play sound 2D, and you'll see that it is a sound base object reference. So my parameter, I called it sound to play, and I look for sound base, and we get the object reference. That's my input parameter. Then what we need to do is get our game instance. And when we are in a base function library, we have to pass it the world context, which is like the level or the state that we're in. 
So we can just type get world context. And off of here, we can type get game instance. Since the music volume and the sound effect volume are part of the base game instance, our special class that we made for the game instance, we need to actually cast to that type. So cast to base game instance. And then I can drag off of this and grab my value. And I need my sound effect volume variable. All right, so that's what I did right here. Now, off the world context, I can drag and type play sound 2D. Now, I will be able to select the sound in here if I want, but I want this to work from all of our other widgets and other sections that we're going to play sound effects from. So, I need to be able to put in any sound. So, I'm going to pass in my sound to play into the sound. Then I'm going to press this little down arrow and expand it, and I want to pass in the sound effect volume to the volume multiplier. The other variables we don't have to touch unless you want to. Right now, we can just leave them all alone. And you'll get this as your end result. So that is custom play sound 2D. Now what we need to do is go into the code and all the blueprints where we had called play sound 2D and replace it with this custom play sound 2D. First place I'm going to go is to the code because that's the most complicated one since we have to actually figure out how we want to handle that behavior. So I'm in my code and I'm in my fighter template character.cpp specifically. But well, I'm just going to search for play sound 2D. So control F, type in play sound 2D, and I'm going to search the entire project. Let's go to every one. This is to play the hit sound for a specific hitbox upon taking damage. So if the hitbox has a specific sound tied to it, then we want to play that sound. In this case, we were calling new gameplay statics, play sound 2D. And we we're passing in the world, which is like the context. And then the sound effect itself. This worked and didn't give us any issues, but we do want to be able to modify this to work with the volume that we have set up in the sound effect volume variable for the game instance. So in that case, we do need to actually pass in the volume. So I'm going to stop this editor for a second. In play sound 2D, you can see we have the world context object, the sound, and then the very next variable on this list is the volume multiplier. It defaults to 1.0, but instead we want to pass in the game instance sound effect volume. Now it's not quite that simple because we don't have a game instance in here. So this won't work, but we can just get the game instance and make it work. So I'm going to go above my play sound 2D line here. I'm going to say if auto game instance ref equals get game instance and we are going to cast the game instance to our u base game instance and then i'm going to wrap the get game instance in more parentheses just like that and then we're going to put this play sound 2d inside of this if statement I'm going to use my game instance ref and grab the sound effect volume off of that. So this will play at the right volume, assuming the game instance ref is valid. Now, the game instance ref should really never be invalid, but if it is, you could still play the sound effect at the regular volume by just putting it inside of an else and removing this optional parameter. If your game instance is invalid, you probably have bigger issues than playing a sound effect, but that is an option that you have available to you. So just be aware of that. Now let's keep searching for play sound 2D. There's only one other part in the code. It's right here. Play the hit sound for a specific hitbox upon blocking an attack. So this is the hit sound of the hitbox when we block the attack. Basically, I was cutting the pitch in half to make it a little bit deeper, and I was playing the same sound effect for that move. We can still do this without really changing anything. We just want to change this 1.0, the volume multiplier, to be the actual sound effect volume. So I can go in here, auto game instance ref equals cast u base game instance, get game instance, put this in brackets, and I can set up an else statement, and I can have the line that was already in here in the else statement. And then in the if statement, 
we can change this 1.0 from being a solid 1.0 to game instance ref sound effect volume. And that will change the volume, assuming the game instance is valid. Those are all the spots in the code. If I hit the arrow again, you'll see I don't have anywhere else. So we are good to go in the code. Now that the code is good with all the sound effect volumes, I'm going to launch the editor and we'll go through the blueprints. Now the editor is back open. So what I'm going to do is go into one of my blueprints here. I'm going to go into my base function library, for example, and I'm going to press control F in here to find, bring up the little find tab. And then we can search for play sound 2D, which is the node that we are looking for in the blueprints. We can press the binoculars here to find in all blueprints. Then after a few seconds, it's going to have all the play sound 2Ds that we've used. And it has been quite a lot of them, but we're going to go through each of them very quickly and call our new function. And I'll show you exactly how to set it up for each of these. And then we will have a fully functional system. The very first one here is our custom play sound 2D. There's no reason to change the play sound 2D by calling itself, so we can skip that first one. The next one is the command list widget. So let's go to them. Play sound 2D. And you can see here is play sound 2D. It's using the back out sound. Again, if I expand this, I see everything is default, including the volume and pitch. What we want to do is get rid of play sound 2D and call custom play sound 2D from our base function library. And I can pass in the back out sound, which was the same sound that was already there. But now it will play at the appropriate volume. And it is literally that simple. So let's go to the next one. And you already know what to do. We're going to call custom play sound 2D. And we're going to put in the same sound effect, which is whoosh 2. We just got to make sure everything links up properly. And we don't want to leave anything out and cause issues because something was disconnected that shouldn't have been. Make sure you compile and save when you're done. And then we can exit out of the command list. The next one is the versus end pop up. So now that we are in here, we can see this play sound 2D, change it to custom play sound 2D, and put in the tick sound effect. All right, let's go to the next one. And it is the confirm one sound. So we're going to say custom play sound 2D. And we're going to use confirm one. Get rid of the old play sound. Put in the new one. Compile and save. And we are done with that widget. Now we have the versus pause menu. So we have custom play sound 2D. At this point, since we have so many of them, I would recommend going ahead and copying this node. That way we can just paste it in when we need to, because we do have a lot of these. All right, next one. So we have confirm one. Save this one versus pause menu is converted. Now, next one is the character select screen. We have a lot in here. So this first one is a whoosh two. We're gonna replace it. Let's go to the next one. This is a tick. Put this guy in here. Next one is a whoosh two. Then we have a whoosh too, yet again. All right. Now, we have a back out. And we have a confirm too. Just remember you're being careful about 
which nodes were plugged into it. That way you can plug the same nodes into it. Don't want to make a mistake and have some issues present because we were changing this over. So this is the last one for the character select screen. Make sure you compile and save. Go ahead and get out of this one. Now we have the credits. And this is the start sound. Compile and save. That is the only one in the credits. So we have the exit game pop up. Tick. And place this. That's the only one in exit game pop up. And close out of that. Now we have the level select screen. This is a whoosh two. This one you see it has a few connectors. Again, just make sure you're careful. Same with this one. This is a tick, but it's got a few of them. We have a back out. And we have a confirm too. All right, and the level select screen is now done. Compile and save and exit out of that one. Now we have the settings screen. This one we were working in a little bit today. So we have a whoosh two. Whoops. All right, we have a back out. We have confirm one. Confirm one. And confirm one. There we go. Compile and save that. That's all of it for the settings screen. And we're coming up on the end here. So we have the main menu screen next. And we have a whoosh two. We have a tick. And we have a confirm one. Remember, it's on the false of this branch. Don't fall prey to getting confused at a branch and putting the wrong thing in, like dragging from true instead of false there. And now the main menu is done, so we can close that. And we have the store. And this has a start sound effect with two connections. All right. This is a back out. And this is confirmed too. Okay, 
and now the store widget is done. So we can close that one. We have the store item pop up. And this is a tick. And that's the only one for store item pop up. So we can close this guy. And we're actually at the bottom. We can't scroll down anymore. So we're at the change control screen. We have a whoosh two. We have a back out. And we're at the bottom of the change control screen, so we can compile and save. Now we have the default game mode BP actually makes a sound effect, and this is the knockout sound. So this is when the round is over. Same deal applies here, though. Even though it's not a widget, we can do knockout. And that's it for the default game mode BP. So we can close that blueprint. Now we have the Anim BP has some sound effects. So we can go in here as well. And we have voice female growl cue. So this is for the entrance sequence. I added a sound effect for it. We can go ahead and do the same deal here. Just make sure that you have the right sound effect because these ones are a little bit different. So custom sound, we're gonna copy this note again, voice underscore female underscore a underscore growl and it is 01 and it is the Q so it's this one specifically and we're gonna play that sound effect in that node now we have another one and this is voice male D underscore battle shout 12 Q Voice, male, shout, it, uh, D, shout, nope, battle shout, that's what it is, battle shout, and the number is 12, and it's the Q, this one right here. So there we go, and this one I believe is the super. And it is, because I can see swap to super view. So the entrance and the super have sound effects. And now the animation blueprint is done. So we can compile and save. Now we have the HUD has sound effects. And these are the on-screen messages. So we want to put in the ready sound here. And next one is here. This is the fight sound. And the last one is right here. This is the fight sound. So these are triggering the initial round, like starting the match, and then triggering subsequent rounds as well. All right, and that's everything for the base game mode HUD. So we can compile and save and close that. Then we have the press any key screen, which has the start sound played here. So start. Compile and save. And last one is the base character blueprint. We got four in here. So this is in the sound effects array section. These are the damage sounds, damage sound effects. So instead of calling play sound 2D for what we pass into this array, I am going to pass in custom play sound 2D. See, it still works the same. We're still going to pass in the value that was already in there for play sound 2D, but we're going to call our own node now.
and same deal for this one right up above. We're calling regular play sound 2D with the results off of this get node. But I'm going to delete that now. Instead, I'm going to say custom play sound 2D. And we're going to pass in the result from the get. There we go. So those have been fixed. Now let's look at the other two. So these are the block effects, including the block sounds. Clean this up a little bit. All right, so here we have our damage sounds again. And we're going to remove the play sound 2D for, you guessed it, custom play sound 2D. And we'll plug this in and plug in the result from the get node. And then this bottom one, I'm guessing, is the last one here. Yep. And so instead of regular play sound 2D, custom play sound 2D. Pass it from the damage sounds array. And now you can see it's passed in in all four of these, which means the base character BP is done, which means we are done transferring everything over. So all that's left to do is test it. And if we come into the game here, so you can hear the regular volume and I can change the volume to say really low. So we can just skip into this match quickly and I have my volume really high and I can tell it's really quiet compared to what it usually is. So what I'm gonna do now is relaunch this and go into my settings and turn it all the way down. And I can tell there's no sound effects on this menu. And when we come into the game, there should be no sound effects either for the entrance. You can see there's no sound effects. So anyway, guys, that is all I got for you today, but I hope this helped you change your sound effect volume, save it out, and actually utilize it in all of the sound effects in your game. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and it's also completely free. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. You guys are amazing and keep this series alive week after week, year after year at this point. So thank you so much. I am so incredibly grateful for you. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It is completely free, and I'd be happy to help you with any issues you ran into. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.